Hey everybody, welcome to the middle of nowhere. Recently I put together parts for a budget streamer build featuring Azeroth's B450M Pro 4 motherboard. Today I'm going to unbox it, go over its features, and give you my first impressions. One of the first things we notice when we get the box to the Azeroth B450M Pro 4 is the Ryzen 3000 desktop ready sticker. If you don't see this sticker on the box, it means you're going to have to flash the BIOS to update it if you're going to use a Ryzen 2 processor, which would be a Series 3000 on up. We do have Ryzen Desktop 2000 ready, as well as the Athlon 2XX GE Series ready. So this motherboard is good to go out of the gate. I'm not going to have to flash it, so my 3600 will work just fine. Let's go ahead and open the box. Inside the box, we've got a rear I.O. shield. Two SATA cables, one with a right angle connector. Looks like we have our M.2 screws. The standoffs might, looks like they're going to be pre-installed, which is always good. We have our driver's disc with an ASRock badge. Of course, goes without saying, always go to the website to get the latest drivers and utilities. We have our manual and an assortment of languages. Is. This looks to be installing memory modules as well as compatibility. So that's cool. Nice little quick reference sheet there. Now if we go to the motherboard itself. It is in a anti-static bag. Oh, and there appears to be some foam in the bag as well. And then here is the motherboard. So we have our heat sinks on our VRMs, which is always good. It's a nice black and gray aesthetic with a kind of a polished gunmetal color. And that's it. That's the unboxing. Pretty simple. Like I said, not, uh, well, not like I said. Not a lot of extras in there, but again, it's a budget motherboard, so I'm not expecting that. All right, that's it. Let's go over the features. The ASRock B450M Pro 4 is an MATX motherboard and it measures 244 by 244 millimeters, just like the Gigabyte B450 Aorus M. The Pro 4 supports Zen, Zen Plus, and Zen 2 processors all the way up to the flagship 3950X CPU. If you are using a Ryzen 3000 series CPU, make sure your box has the AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready sticker on it. As there is no USB BIOS flashback, the only way you'll be able to update the BIOS is to get a loaner chip from AMD or take the motherboard to a local retailer and see if they can provide the BIOS update for you. There are four DIMM slots and you can install up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 dual channel memory. The motherboard supports ECC and non-ECC unbuffered memory and also supports Extreme Memory Profile aka XMP. Depending on which Zen CPU you have, the following speeds are supported. 2133 MHz, 2400, 2667, 2933, and 3200. Again, depending on your CPU, you may be required to overclock your RAM either manually or via XMP settings to achieve the 2933 MHz or 3200 MHz speeds. For those of you who like RGB, you're in luck. There's one ARGB 3-pin 5-volt header and two RGB 5-pin 12-volt headers. One RGB header is referred to as the AMD fan LED header, however, you're probably going to be able to use this as a normal RGB header. RGB can be changed using Azeroth's Polychrome software. There's a total of five 4-pin fan headers, there's one dedicated CPU fan connector, a CPU fan water pump connector, and three chassis fan water pump connectors. When it comes to storage options on the B450M Pro 4, you won't be disappointed. There are four SATA 3 connectors with support for RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 10. There are two M.2 connectors, both support the M key type and a variety of drive lengths. The top is an Ultra M.2 socket and supports NVMe SSDs using the PCI Express up to Gen 3x4 or Gen 3x2 depending on the CPU you use. Zen Plus and Zen 2 CPUs will enjoy Gen 3x4 speeds. The bottom M.2 socket uses SATA 3 lanes. Keep in mind the lower M.2 slot shares lanes with the third SATA port on the motherboard. If one is in use, the other is disabled. If you're worried about the temperatures of your M.2 drives, there are no heat sinks provided with this motherboard, so you'll need to bring your own. There are a total of three PCI slots on this motherboard. Your graphics card will go in the middle PCI slot. This is a PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slot at 16 width. The bottom PCI slot is a PCI Express 2.0 x16 slot for x4 width cards. 
If you take a closer look at this slot, you'll see that the contact points only go about halfway or, well, in this regard, I guess a quarter of the way through the width of the slot. Finally, the top slot is a PCI Express 2.0 by one slot for by one width cards. Additionally, there is support for AMD Quad Crossfire X and Crossfire X on this motherboard, but you cannot run NVIDIA GPUs in SLI. Before getting into the rest of the internal I.O., you'll find the 24-pin ATX main power connector and 8-pin ATX 12-volt power connector on the side and top of the motherboard, respectively. On the bottom of the motherboard, left to right, you'll find the front panel audio head the aforementioned ARGB and RGB headers, a trusted platform module or TPM header, a COM port header, two USB 2.0 headers. Instead of a dedicated clear CMOS button, you'll find a clear CMOS jumper. Yay! Next to the jumper, you'll find two of the five four pin fan headers, which I've already talked about. Next to that is a chassis intrusion header. This supports case open detection, and you'll need a speaker connected to your computer for this to work. Speaking of connecting a speaker, here's the power LED and speaker header. Next to that is the system panel header, and on the side, you'll find one USB 3.1 Gen 1 header. There is no Q code reader, and I couldn't spot any debug LEDs, nor did I see anything in the manual mentioning they are present. I'll find out whether they exist or not when I build with this motherboard. The B450M Pro 4 supports 7.1 surround sound audio and uses the Realtek ALC892 codec. The audio caps used are ELNA, and according to ASRock, they help reduce noise levels significantly. To configure 7.1 audio, you'll need a front panel audio module and use the driver software ASRock provides. I'm not 100% sure what a front panel audio module even is, and my research didn't really help me find anything else. I'd assumed it was some kind of decked out five and a quarter inch part with equalizers and knobs and such. If you know what this is, please sound off in the comments below. Now I want to talk about power delivery for a little bit. ASRock calls the power delivery on the motherboard hybrid digi power design. On the product's website, it states ASRock uses 42 amp power chokes to effectively make the saturation current up to three times better, thus providing enhanced and improved V-core voltage to the motherboard. The power delivery is touted by ASRock as a 9 phase, but it has been described by an Antec as 6 plus 3 configuration and by the YouTube channel Actually Hardcore Overclocking as 3 plus 3. There are power delivery heat sinks on the top and side which should keep the MOSFETs cool during heavy operation, but I found these not the most securely attached and actually there is quite a bit of play when it comes to moving the heat sinks. Admittedly, I don't know much about power delivery, so do your research with regards to the topic, especially if you want to overclock. For more information, check out the Actually Hardcore Overclocking video by Buildzoid, the link is in the description. Finally, we come to the rear I.O. There's one PS2 keyboard slash mouse port, there are two USB 2.0 ports. There are three display inputs on the motherboard, you have one D-sub port and one DVI-D port, both of which support a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1200 at 60 Hz. The third display input is an HDMI port that supports a maximum resolution of 4096 by 2160 at 24 Hz. The DVI-D and HDMI ports support HDCP 1.4, and there's also support for 4K Ultra HD playback with the HDMI port. Next up are two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. There's one Type A and one Type C port. And after that, we have four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. The Gigabit Ethernet port uses the Realtek RTL8111H chip and supports 10, 100, and 1000 megabits per second. The rear audio consists of three inputs. You have a line-in, a front speaker, and a microphone. So what are my first impressions of the ASRock B450M Pro 4? Overall, I like it. It's got a lot of the same features as the Gigabyte Aorus B450M that I've already reviewed. It's priced competitively with other motherboards in its class. I bought mine for $79.99 and at the time of this video you can get it for $89.99. It has a lot of expandability and supports Ryzen processors all the way up to the current flagship 3950X. It has four DIMM slots for oodles of RAM and there are three PCI slots for plenty of expandability. The internal I.O. is a cornucopia of connectivity, and the rear panel has plenty of USB ports, which I'm always happy to see. Where the Pro 4 stands out are its two M.2 slots, the Type-C port on the rear I.O., and its five four-pin fan headers. I've talked about the good, but what are some things that I don't like about the Pro 4? For one, the lack of any kind of troubleshooting indicators is a little bit, I guess, displeasing or troubling, if you will. Uh, there's no debug LEDs, there's no Q-code display, so really if anything goes wrong with this motherboard, um, I wouldn't be able to tell. And unless I connect an internal speaker because there is a header and I can speak beep boop beep language, 
It's the only way I'm going to figure out if a component is either not working or not seated correctly. Additionally, I find the rear audio to be a bit lackluster. As this is a budget motherboard, maybe I shouldn't expect people who buy it to have high-end audio components to connect to it and need a lot of connections. And so maybe all you do need is the line in, the headphone jack, and the microphone jack. However, as this motherboard is advertised as being able to support 7.1 surround sound, I'd like to know how to achieve it, and the information provided is a little bit lackluster and also a bit confusing to me. What exactly is a front panel audio module? Come again? How do I get one? Do I already have one on this motherboard? My research hasn't really enlightened me on any of this, and what I did find, it again, is a bit confusing. Finally, as with the RSM, there's no clear CMOS button, just the jumper. And I guess I shouldn't be surprised as this is a budget motherboard, and I should just come to expect that to be a feature or present uh, for motherboards in this price class. Maybe someday I'll be pleasantly surprised by the presence of a clear CMOS button for a motherboard that costs $90 or less. That's all I have to say about the ASRock B450M Pro 4 motherboard. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like the video if you liked it, show your support for the channel by getting subscribed, and don't forget to click that notification icon so you don't miss out on any future content. I'm Seth, and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.